All right, for this problem, we got x to the power of 90 over x to the power of 41. We definitely do not want to expand this. So we're gonna use the rule. We got the base x, which is good, but since we see that this is being divided between the two bases, x and x, that means we're going to be subtracting the two exponents, starting with the exponent in the numerator, the 90, and then we'll be subtracting the exponent from the denominator, 41. So that's not something you even have to do in your head or on paper. That's something you just put into the calculator if you need to, but 90 minus 41, I get 49 out of that. And this, this is all we want in the end. There's our objective. I can simplify exponential expressions when bases are the same. So we've seen several rules applied. Today we're gonna to see an extra one. But take 15 seconds and copy this down, please. So as a quick review, because a lot of this exponent stuff is very new to us. Remember here that five is called the base and four is the exponent. And it reads five to the power of four. So if we saw something else, something like this, I don't know, something like that, that would read seven to the power of eight. That's how it reads, uh, even though this, this eight being kind of smaller in the upright corner, that's kind of new to us, but that's, that's where the exponents go. And if it's smaller and to the top right here, then we know it is an exponent. And we know that the base, for, for example, in this one, the seven, that's the number that's being repeatedly multiplied. The eight, the exponent or power, that is what tells us how many times the base is being repeated, repeatedly multiplied. So here's two rules that we've seen, the product and quotient rules. So if we see that the bases are the same and they're being multiplied, we know we can add the exponents. Like we saw in the bell work, if the bases are the same and they're being divided, then we take the two exponents and subtract them, but it has to be in the order of numerator exponent minus denominator exponent. So we'll be adding another rule today, but let's just kind of review some of this stuff, just like we saw in the bell work. For example, on this one, we got base 17s for both of the values. So we know that in the end here, we're going to have base 17. But since we are multiplying the two bases, 17 and 17, that tells us we're going to be adding the exponents. So what are the exponents? We got 8. And we got 22. Now with subtraction, the order does matter. But with addition, the order does not matter. So if you had reverse that, made that 22 plus 8, it's not going to matter because order with addition doesn't matter, it's commutative. So we end up with the same base, 17, but now my new exponent, eight plus 22, that's gonna be 30. And that's all we want out of this. There's no need to actually evaluate that. In fact, this number would be ginormous. A calculator, most calculators would not be able to uh, spit out that value because it's so large. Maybe it would do it in scientific notation. I don't know, and I also don't care. So, on this one, we have the same idea, right? We got the two same bases, five and five. So we know we're gonna end up with base five, but in this case, once again, we see division between the base fives. And since we're dividing the bases, we will be subtracting the exponents, starting with the exponent from the numerator, 17. So I got 17 there, and then I got a nine, exponent in the denominator. So that's gotta come second, okay? So again, this will give us the same base, five, but it's going to simplify that exponent, 17 minus nine, which comes out as eight. And again, this is as far as we need to go on this. Well, then we end up with something like this. Okay, now if we can just remember what exponents mean, then we can do this even without the rule. So here's what I'm talking about. Right here, we got 
4 to the power of 2 in the parentheses, right? But the 3, <clears throat> excuse me, the 3 exponent here in purple tells us that we have three of these parentheses being multiplied together. So I can take those parentheses this way, and I can pretty much just duplicate it three times. Like this. And these would all be multiplied. Okay, so again, we see that we have one, two, three of these because of the exponent three on the outside of that parentheses. Now, even though I'm not showing it, we know that the only operation that does not have to be shown is multiplication. So there is multiplication between these parentheses. And we know, just like we saw two slides ago, that if we have the same bases here, which are fours, I can keep the same base. And when we're multiplying the same bases, we end up adding the exponents. But what are the exponents? Well, we got the exponents of 2, 2, and 2. So in the end here, we end up with the same base 4. But I know 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. So you end up with 4 to the power of 6. Now if we go back up here at the top, 2 and 3, right? What would we do with 2 and 3 to get the 6 right there? And I think some of you know. And it, it kind of explains itself down here anyways. This right here is repeated addition, okay? And we know that when we have repeated addition, that actually is just multiplication. And of course, this is just dealing with the exponents, right? So if we go back to the top, let's work with, with what we have up there, okay? So we would keep the same base, but the two exponents, two and three here, since it's uh, a parentheses to a power, that indicates that we're gonna be multiplying those two exponents, which then would give us four to the power of six. So uh, you're welcome to expand it like this and then add if you need to. You could even expand these because there's only six fours, but, uh, you need to get the same answer no matter which method you use. But this right, right up here at the top, this is actually what we're looking for because we're going to be using this rule to solve these. So there's the rule. Now you'll notice down here at the bottom that if you have more than one factor, I use the word factor, and I know we've forgotten what factor means. Factor is just a value that's being multiplied by another value, okay? So... In this, in this case, we have two factors. One number being multiplied by another number. If you have a power on the outside, it really applies to both of the factors on the inside. For the most part, we're only going to see something like this. So only one individual value in the parentheses to a, a power. But if you see a power on the outside of the parentheses, then we know that we're going to be multiplying the exponents, just like we saw in that last problem. Now, along these lines, I think it's good review because some students have forgotten. Let's say you saw just a base 8, okay? In fact, let's say that it was multiplied by 8 to the power of 2, okay? Now, some students are, are forgetting that this base 8 right here has an exponent. There is an exponent there. You just can't see it. And if you can't see it, that indicates that it is an exponent of 1. We'll go over why that's not an exponent of zero later. But for now, just know that if you cannot see the exponent, you need to understand that there is one there. In fact, if you don't see the exponent, I would recommend putting the one there so you know what the exponent actually is. Okay. All right, so here's this one. And yeah, we could expand this, and it really wouldn't be too bad if you just used the last if you use the product rule on this one. However, this one right here, we're going to use the power of a power rule because we got a power, and then on the outside of the parentheses, we've got another power there. Okay, so I'm going to keep the, sa the same base here, 8. And all I'm doing is working with the exponents. Okay, so what are my exponents? I got a 12, and I got a 2. 
I'm going to be working with those two same exponents, and I'll keep them in the same order. But since we have parentheses here, that indicates we're going to be multiplying the exponents. So I'll keep the same base 8, but 12 times 2, that's going to give me 24. And that's it. That's all I need on this. Like I said, you're welcome to expand that if you'd like to. It's just not required that you do. All that is required is that you end up with the same answer. Now, we're, we're starting to run into a lot of rules, and even my college students are like, hey, this is a lot of rules, and they start getting stuff mixed up. Okay, so just remember, if you're multiplying the same bases, this one is not showing any other bases, it's just base 8. Okay, and if it has parentheses like we see here, we know we're going to be multiplying the exponents. If we see that it's in some kind of fractional form, we know we'll be subtracting the exponents. Like I said before, if we're multiplying the bases, then we end up adding the exponents. Okay, so we have to be able to, even right now while we're just getting used to this, you may have to take your time and really get, and really think about which rule you should use. Otherwise, you're gonna get, you're gonna get these mixed up and maybe even do the wrong rule because Right now, while we're getting used to this, a common mistake we see is 12 plus 2, which is 14. Well, if it was 8 to the power of 12 times 8 to the power of 2, that would be correct. But it's, it has the parentheses, so we, need, we know we need to uh, multiply. All right, here's this one. Base 11 to the power of 34, all that to the power of 19. You guys try this one out, 30 seconds. So, on this one, if you tried this one out, and you got 11 to the power of 53, that's not what this is, okay? It's not 11 to the power of 53. Some of you guys don't even know how I got that. That's uh, from 34 plus 19, okay? Again, we're not, we are not adding the exponents here. Well, what are we doing? Well, once again, we see that we have the parentheses here, which indicates that we're going to be multiplying the exponents. So the base will stay the same as 11. I'm going to take the two exponents. I got 34 and I got 19. And I'm just going to be multiplying those. And yeah, maybe some of you guys can do that in your head. I can't. So I did it in my calculator and I got 646. This is all we want here. That's okay if the bases are uh, variables, like this one, x. We don't know what x is, just represents some number. So it's a variable, but the same rule still applies here. Since we see parentheses, we're gonna take that base x, we'll keep it, but the exponents, they're gonna need to be multiplied. So I got exponents of seven and five, and I'm just going to be multiplying these out. So I got base x, 7 times 5, and it's going to be 35. And once again, that, that's as far as we need to go. Now, while that may seem oversimplified, it really isn't. So I, I think sometimes students want this to be more complicated than it is. It just isn't, all right? If you can understand the three rules, yeah, we're really just using the same four basic operations on exponents. Well, three, I guess. In this class, we will not get into division of exponents, although next year you will. Um, but some students try to overcomplicate this or make it worse than it is. No, it's, it's not like you're going to do like 7 to the power 5 here. It's just 7 times 5. That's it. So on this one, once again, please, please do not add these two exponents. They are separated by this parentheses here, which indicates that for the base m, which we will keep, we're going to be multiplying the two exponents, okay? Not adding. So we're going to take that 12 exponent, and we're going to multiply it by the 16 exponent. And that will give us a new... The base will be the same, but the, it'll give us a new exponent here. Okay, so I put that in the calculator already. I got uh, 192. And again, that's as far as we need to go on this. 
Now, this is just, everything in this unit is just an introduction to exponents. So you can see we're really only practicing using one, one of these rules at a time. But do understand, I believe next year, that they're gonna expand this and start combining the rules. So sometimes you'll have to add first, subtract first, maybe multiply first. Uh, and then you gotta combine that with subtraction or addition. All right, so on this problem right here, we got two different bases. Okay, so on this one, we, we see the y is to the power of four here. It, it's the x right here that causes more problems than we wish it did. Um, it's x to the power of one, you guys. So what are we gonna do with this? Well, uh, again, we, we could expand this if we wanted to. Not that I think anyone really wants to, but here one. I'm just trying to demonstrate what this means. Two is four. And the fifth one. Okay. So what we have here is two different bases. We got X's and we got Y's, right? Now we do know that all these parentheses are being multiplied. So since they're being multiplied, that indicates that we're going to need to be adding the exponents, okay? And yeah, I probably should give myself more space. But the x's have powers of one, so we're just adding these ones together. And I can just solve, I, I can simplify that for now. x to the power of one plus one plus one plus one plus one would end up being x to the power of five. Now, what about this base y stuff? Well, it has exponents of 4. So we'll do 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. And I know that would give me 20. All right. Now, that's kind of the long way to do this. Thank you. There's a longer way to do it. I just don't think anyone really wants that. Even though math is mental abuse to humans. However... What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the power of a power rule to what we've seen. Okay, so what this tells us is that we had the two bases, x and y. They had their individual exponents of 1 and 4. Show that in red there. Uh, but then with this exponent of 5 on the outside, right, because it is parentheses, that indicates that we are going to be multiplying it's just we're going to be multiplying twice because there's two bases. Well, what are we, uh, what are we multiplying by? Five. Okay. Just we're going to have to do it twice. So what does this end up being? Well, you got the same bases, x and y's. But now new exponents. Uh, one times five would be five. That's our exponent for base x. And then the y has exponent four times five, which is twenty. And uh, you can see this answer here with the shortcut with the rule is exactly the same as if we had expanded it right here. Although the expansion, I worry for some of you guys, may have been more fun, but you can decide for yourself. Okay, so I, I believe you may see a problem like this on the assignment. If you don't, then just know that it's coming. And yeah, we could work with this even when there's more than one base in the parentheses. All right, so there's our objective again. We should be able to simplify exponential expressions when bases are the same for now, okay? And again, we've gone over the three basic operations for uh, exponents, addition, subtraction, and now multiplication. Again, we will not be covering division of exponents in this class because that is a ninth grade thing.